A while back, I was wandering through my local grocery store and saw that bicycle playing cards had some new designs. I thought about how everyone right now has a deck of cards in their house. You know exactly where they are, in a junk drawer, in the garage, wherever. And while not everyone has exactly the same ones, they're all universally identifiable. Maybe yours are from the gift shop at a vacation you took five years ago, or maybe you're like me, and you grab a deck every once in a while when you're standing in line with sandwich bread because you love the feel of a new deck of playing cards. When I thought about doing a video for playing cards, I was quickly amazed at just how many brands there are out there and how many designs. It seems that if there's anything that outnumbers how many reskins of Monopoly there are, it's how many different styles of playing cards you can find. I reached out to a bunch of different companies that advertise pretty readily on social media and came up with these six. King's Wild, Rare, Marmon, Copag, Western Tropic, and the aforementioned Bicycle. What I'd like to do today is show you what each company offers, both in terms of design and quality, the art, the durability. And at the end, I'll give you what I'd buy if I were you and for what purpose. Let's dig in. The King's Wild Project sent us two decks of cards that couldn't be more wildly different from each other. This 1982 VHS deck and the Postage Paid deck. The VHS deck features some classic 1980s feel on the hologrammed faces, swapping black suits for blue to give the deck a very 3D movie feel. You're gonna have to be careful with how you use this deck as the back of the cards are designed to look like a VHS tape, but the amount of tape on each reel changes as you go through the deck. Anyone wondering if you have a handful of spades won't need to wonder too hard with these. Also of note, getting them back into this tuck box isn't the easiest thing in the world. Still, the feel is nice once you play with them a couple times to wear off the stickiness of the hologram facing, and the theme is very cool. The Postage Paid deck has a similar box problem as it's sealed shut with this stamp sticker that's for sure not going to work long term. The cards do slide into this box easier than their VHS counterparts though. The faces have a classic look to them, fitting right into your shot for shot remake of Maverick or Tombstone, and with each individual card adorned with a unique address written in flourished cursive, they're absolutely gorgeous. Additionally, each face is a postmark dated March 13th, 2020 from a city of origin and some manner of postage. Unlike its magnetic tape cousin, this deck features a uniform backing resembling a 13 cent stamp. Both of these decks have a quality feel to them, and while they will crease hard, they will resist tearing to a certain extent. Due to the phenomenal attention paid to the wildly differing aesthetics across all their cards, I'm recommending King's Wild Cards if you're looking for a conversation piece during your games of spades or rummy. It's true that at $15 each, these are certainly higher priced than a kitchen table deck of cards, and you're likely gonna need to find a new storage solution for some decks, as the boxes won't last. Still, if you're a collector and prefer to simply own these admittedly gorgeous works of art, then they won't disappoint. Rare is a marketplace website that sent us these three decks to look at, the Markin, Magnum Force, and Gaia decks. The Gaia deck is jungle themed, sporting an aged newspaper yellowed card back and front. Each of the suits features a different set of animals on the jack through king, and the ace is adorned with a representation of where you'd find those animals. The backs of these cards feature a neat brown, orange, and blue patterning. The quality of the deck is nice, and the simplicity of the card face is neatly appealing. The tuck box opens from the top, as most do, and features some nice art all around as well as inside. The Markin cards are a limited edition, only having made 2,000 decks. We have number 908, and it almost hurt to crack the seal on these. As you can tell, the tuck box is beautifully adorned with a raised pattern evoking Germany, and these are made by the Legends Playing Card Company. Inside this box, we find absolutely meticulously designed card faces, the red suits being transposed into gold for this set, and the face cards featuring characters from German literature. The ace of each set features a single symbol of the suit, but enlarged in the center. The card back for this deck are nice, but I was hoping for something a little more standout. As it stands, these evoke a strong bicycle back feel to them, sticking to the gold and black theme of the card faces themselves. Again, both of these decks are $15, but a lot of their decks can be had for a more reasonable 10. While I love the design approach to both of these decks, the quality and ease of creasing wasn't there for a price of $15. Still, there are a ton of cards to choose from on their site, and as you're bound to find one of them that fits your fancy, good luck and high five. If your aim is to browse for a signature deck without really knowing what you're looking for, Rare is the place to go. Western Tropics sent us a single deck of their cards, but the nice thing about this deck is that there's a larger tabletop game that these are a part of. I wasn't sent that game, so I can't comment on it, but the first thing I noticed when I pulled these out of their tuck box was just how thick they are. 52 of a standard deck of cards stacked together only comes up to about two-thirds the height of the Western Tropic cards. 
Very resistant to bending or tearing, these cards shuffle incredibly well for their thickness. The faces of these cards have a natural wood yellowness to them, and while I'd like more differentiation between the clubs and the spades, as well as between the different suits' face cards, the overall design fits the theme. The card backs have a cool skull design, hidden in a desert island motif, done up in a forest green and sunset orange. Price for the cards alone is $13, which is a couple bucks lower than the decks we've seen already, and for the thickness, it seems like a steal. The full Western Tropic game is $25.99, and we've included a link in the description of the video to it, as well as to all of the cards we're seeing here. Given the high quality of construction, but somewhat lacking visual appeal, I'm super curious about the bigger game at play. These will bring a great feel to your game night, though, if durability is your thing, you like the look, these are worth a long look. Next up, we have this poker set from Copag USA. These come two decks to a pack and ship sealed in a plastic carrying case in lieu of a tuck box. While this set here is intended for poker, they do sell a set for bridge as well as single packs of cards. The plastic spade piece in the middle here is designed to elegantly hold the decks in place and keep them from sliding around and mixing in the box. They sent us the gray and purple set, but they have a few other two color combinations available. The draw of these cards is there are 100% PVC plastic, so they'll shake off spills and mess with a wipe down. Additionally, they're much more resistant to creasing and tearing. Being made entirely of plastic, these cards will take a few plays to lose their slickness, so keep that in mind that shuffling and dealing will get easier the more they're played with. While the art is nothing special, face cards are your standard card art, and the backs of these are a generic yet intricate vine design, the price for all plastic poker cards you can use over and over and over and over again is $17 for the pair. While they won't turn heads playing spades or hearts with your aunt and uncle, pulling these out at poker night will certainly get people asking where you got them. Additionally, they have a set of bridge cards as well, but since my understanding of that game is mostly derived from the How I Met Your Mother episode, where they just play cards on the table while saying the word bridge, I'll leave it to you to decide on your own if that's the thing you want. These nautical-themed cards are next on our list. The faces of these cards are standard white with an elegant font for the numbers. Face cards are a cute play on the standard faces, but now with merfolk heads. The Suicide King of Hearts is plunging a dagger into his chest rather than through his head, and while the standard symbols don't change that much, we're giving up the true red of hearts and diamonds for a complementary orange. What we're complementing is the card back, again a play on the standard lady seen on a lot of cards, only now she's a double-legged mermaid. Intricate designs of trees and coral come combined with the faces of the sun and moon for an interesting visual. Overall quality is not as high as some of the cards we've seen, as these feel more like the cards you'd pick up anywhere rather than getting something truly special. Still, at $10 a deck, you could perhaps be a little more forgiving with whose hands these cards get into. If the theme compels you, then dive in. Finally, we end our trek with the institution in playing cards. Bicycle sent us a whopping six decks to look at, and I'm going to briefly show you three of them. I'll start with my favorite. These are the capital cards. As is the case with most of the ones they sent us, these aren't anything special from a construction or thickness standpoint. They'll last a while, but they'll certainly wear out over time. The card back is a play on the hemisphere design of the standard deck, but including the U.S. Capitol building on the north and south sides. Flipping them over is where I really fell in love with this design. The pencil-thin numbers in the corners offset by the giant symbols in the center creates a cool aesthetic for me. The face cards are still bound by a frame, but their regalia is offset in gold, which adds a nice new feel to the cards. Next up are the Asteroid cards, part of a four-deck set called the Stargazer Bundle. These cards exchange the white card faces for all black, and the symbols on the faces are filled in with a gray and red rocky background. The face cards have their colors inverted for a cool effect, but I would have liked something that popped a little bit more. The card backs have a double asteroid effect on them, done in the same red and gray as the faces. While these are fine overall, the Stargazer decks in the set look amazing, so if space is your thing, I'd have a look at all of those before deciding. Finally, Bicycle sent us these Metalux cards, which are exactly the same as their standard index cards, but with real metal laid into the card back. They're really slick looking on that side, so much so that I wanted something on the faces as well, but didn't get it. At $10, these are by far the most expensive bicycle cards that I found on their site, but unless you're into super shiny, shiny nature, you could probably find something else. All that being said, Bicycle has been the gold standard in playing cards for over a century, and with these decks all between $5 and $10, there's a reason you see them everywhere. I personally didn't know until I started this project that Bicycle even did fancy card art, so you'll be forgiven for thinking you had to go elsewhere to get it. With all these cards and more available out there, this is, after all, just a sampling of cards.
cards that we were able to get our hands on, the demand for your money and space in your drawer is wide and varied. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to how much you want to spend, how badly you want really slick looking art, and what your individual taste for that art is. For my money, these Copag poker cards are an absolute steal if you host home games regularly. The King's Wild cards are a good combination of gorgeous and good quality, but they're expensive and the boxes are a little annoying. That said, none of these decks compromised on paper quality. There aren't any here that will feel flimsy or cheap as that deck you picked up on vacation at the cabin. For best overall, if you're looking for a deck of cards to keep in your drawer at home and pull out for a quick game of euchre or whatever, you can't go wrong with Bicycle. I've linked to all these below in the video description so you can go buy some if you'd like, and let me know in the comments which ones were your favorite. Oh, also, if you enjoyed our slight deviation from the usual board game videos, let me know that too, won't you? I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always sleeve, well, your cards. <laughs>Hey everyone, if you liked our video, please hit that sub button and ring that bell for notifications. Check out all of our other offerings at goodluckhighfive.com and please consider becoming a patron of the channel over at patreon.com slash glhfmagic. It helps us keep making reviews, videos, podcasts, and you can become a member for any dollar amount. We're also always looking for new games to review. You can reach us at glhfmagic at gmail.com. You can follow me, Captain N, the Game Master, at CaptainNGM on Twitter and Instagram, and follow the channel at glhfmagic. Remember, please shop at your local game store whenever possible. Until next time, I'm Nicholas, and good luck. High five.